So uh-huh. this is the second round of recording. I uh, wanted to be more, wanted to be more factual and correct with my information, because just now I was editing the video and I must give the correct information. So basically, uh, I am a, a Suntec Unit shareholder. Okay, uh, my name is Minan. So what I do right now is that uh, I help my help both of my parents build up my uh, their retirement portfolio based on REITs. So um, in this round, I'll be use I'll be uh, assessing the results of Suntech because uh, it has released its results for third quarter two o two one. So uh, what would I do? Do I increase my positions or do I sell it away or do I continue to hold it on? Uh, as of now, um, I'm still holding on to it because uh, I'm still monitoring all the. Uh, business results that's coming out so that's what got this whole video will be talking about so i do have my ipad here uh, because i tabulated uh, the notes that i wanted to share with the uh, with the youtube community okay so if you are a unit uh, suntech shareholder i also look forward to seeing you in the physical agm uh, really love to meet people you know as compared to you know getting stuck i wouldn't say stuck in this house so let's hit straight. Uh, basically, uh, it's gonna, I'm going to be talking about the difference between the Q2 and the Q3 so that at least uh, what other things do I look out for? Okay, so that's where I'm going to uh, talk about in this video. So first thing is, uh, you know, as all, all businesses, you need to make sure that the revenue, uh, the top line is increasing, right? So that's the first thing that I'll, I'll look. So we hit straight to page six, right? Uh, this is where I also put a photo, right? So that at least you can see, uh, here's the part that I wanted to be mm, mm, accurate and factual. So when I look at the uh, third, third quarter numbers, right, as compared to the first half, okay, um, in fact, uh, Q3 across uh, some type of office uh, or perhaps across his whole portfolio, numbers have improved. Okay, so that's the first thing that I as a shareholder would definitely uh, rejoice about. Okay, uh, in Singapore currently, uh, uh, we are opening up in January 2022, right? Uh, so really look forward to the portfolio having more footfall back in. But definitely one thing for certain is that there is a new contribution by Minister Building and this is something that I believe I'm a broken parrot <coughs> that uh, when you might want to look at the risk that you're investing, whether is there any uh, potential growth in the earnings, right? So. For Suntech, uh, it recently just uh, received new contributions from the Minister Building in, in London. So, uh, take note, uh, there should be a potential increase in the amount of dividends that we should get back uh, from this Minister Building. So, that's the first thing to take note. Okay? And of course, um, from page 6, revenue increase, did that really translate to a higher uh, distribution use so that's where, where we hit to page 9 right so hey I had to pause that original video um because it this round uh, this video there's something extra uh, for you who's watching I'll be quick um my team is running a so-called like a invest for good campaign uh, where we're going to uh, allow uh, the public community to uh, learn value investing for a dollar uh, more details uh, can be found in the description below. So let's head back to the main video. Appreciate. So down here, I'll just show you page nine. Okay. Scrolling on my iPad. Uh, definitely, what is certain is um, there is a 20.8% 20 point, 20 point increase. Of course, since third quarter 2020, uh, there was still the effects of a COVID. Then, definitely, in third quarter 2021, we sh- should see. Since we're starting from base, we should see that it's increased. And Suntech did increase uh, by 20.8%. And the reason they decided is the higher distributed income from operations. And that's a good thing to take note. Okay. So first thing, looking at the revenue. Second, does it translate to a higher uh, dividend yield? Okay. So based on these two points, Suntech has achieved it. So what's the third point that I look at is the future, right? <clears throat> on page 16, let me just take <clears throat> Thank you <clears throat> for allowing me to drink water. 
So on page 16, right, uh, <clears throat> that's where we look at the occupancy rates because uh, that gives us foresight that if the third quarter it is able to, uh, or perhaps in third quarter you're able to get these occupancy rates right, what is what can we expect in fourth quarter? So what I'll show right now is also page 16. So let's head to page 16. Um, this is basically how I keep analyzing or perhaps keep assessing my uh, the results of all my reads so you can see that the, uh, on this picture right now right uh, yeah the occupancy rate uh, is at these numbers right but what I did differently is I also wanted to make sure that from quarter to quarter the committed occupancy is also increasing so um, what I did see is that uh, across between the second quarter results and the third quarter results right uh, most of the buildings have improved their occupancy rate may that translate to better revenues and higher distribution use right so uh, of course uh, when I first set up my whole read portfolio I was really fo I was totally focusing on office of course uh, uh, recently I've been looking at uh, Keppel DC but that's uh, just to sidetrack but now, based on something, apart from the office, I'm also went to look at the more occupancy, right? So let's go to page 23 down here. And it seems like when I compare between Q2 and Q3, right? Uh, the occupancy rate did go up. So with this information, what do we do right now, right? Uh, of course, based on the use, right? Uh, uh, right now, I'm still holding on to my positions because uh, my cash flow, I'm putting it, I'm holding it, but I'm also putting it to uh, Capital DC. And right now, if you, right now, I'm not putting in any more positions into Suntech or even my office suites until probably January two two two. Of course, would that would that mean that I miss uh, some opportunities? Uh, yes, I would would. So uh, please practice independent thinking. And wanted to, what's the gift about, right? Uh, yeah, what's the gift about? So uh, my team and I, uh, actually I'm from V College. Okay, so uh, we share about value investing. Um, value investing has, uh, for the last 10 years, have provided me another way of uh, looking at things. Like, whether uh, in work, in investment, right? Because the, the, there's a thing called the, between the price and the value. So, uh, when we assess anything, what's the value, right? Uh, I could be overvalued at work right now. I could be undervalued. Uh, our Suntech rate could be undervalued. It could be overvalued. It all is based on subjective value. But the key thing, right? Despite such a subjective thing is that it gives a proper framework, right? It always reminds me, hey, what's the value? Then uh, each investor will craft out their own, own investment framework and for you who watch this video and subscribe uh, that's how we help each other to improve our framework right uh, so if you are new to uh, value investing or perhaps you have not heard of it but you are investing in REITs uh, I'll just put the link at the bottom below to say that hey uh, what's the how, how can you learn a little bit more about uh, value investing so this is what this video would be about and meanwhile stay safe stay healthy uh, if you like the video uh, please share right and if you feel that what I say is reliable credible uh, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one bye